Okay, next question. Big fan of the Ask the Doc series. I watch them all in numerous times, so I don't miss anything. Dr. Rand McLean is the man without a doubt. What are his thoughts for someone, obviously me, who is on TRT, 200 milligrams a week of testosterone cypionate, running SARMS or Osterin? Uh, yeah. Does, uh, does he see any benefit to it all since being on TRT? Uh, there's, uh, is, there any, is there really any need? Uh, I'm now in my off season from competing in bodybuilding and I'm looking to add some quality muscle. And to be honest, I'd like to stay away from uh, anabolic steroids unless I'm in contest prep. Thanks, man. Big fan of the channel in general. Jason. He didn't say his age in that, did he? Uh, nope. But he did say he's on replacement therapy. Right now, 200 so, eggs a week of sips, yeah. Yeah, which is a standard dose uh, of, yeah, testosterone cypionate, which I guess to get to the heart of the question, I no, I wouldn't recommend any SARM. Uh, What's SARM? Selective andro androgen receptor modulator. Okay. Uh, and Osterin is one that's a pretty popular one. Um, and it's supposed to, you know, hit the receptor like testosterone does and give you the same effects. I see. And there are some companies trying to promote it. Uh, I'm not sure what the status is in terms of legality at this point. Um, but uh, I am aware of some human studies. Uh, I know a doctor that went through some human studies. Um, and I've seen the results. The problem with using SARMs, uh, I see the problem. The results I've seen with SARMs, you can feel good. You can get the same uh, type of effects you would with standard testosterone replacement therapy, like with Cipionate. But what I see as a potential significant drawback is it uh, drops your HDL significantly. Kind of like Winstrol does. You know, mm -hmm. I always warn you know bodybuilders if you're going to use Winstrol, know that you're going to cut your HDL in half within about three days. Wow. That's significant. Mm -hmm. And while I don't buy into the you know the cholesterol myth when it comes to to uh, it being the the protagonist in building plaque, it just happens to be the component of plaque. Um, you know, there are studies that show. Well, certainly we know that a higher HDL is going to help. Um, uh, I'm not going to give a lesson on HDL with a lot of things. It's it's a it's it's something that's preferential. So, you know, if he's already on TRT using something that's legal and is a standard and good dose. I mean, he's going to be at, because of the way it's, it's dose, you know, it'll probably be at about a little high, above high normal for half the week, a little below high normal for half the week. And average high normal, it's going to get great results safely. Uh, I, I wouldn't trade that for a, a SARM uh, where you're, you know, at a minimum, uh, taking a chance with your HDL. Well, gotcha. you know, and then, you know, as far as I know, at least in this country, testosterone cypionate is going to be a lot cheaper also to get into practical aspects than, than buying SARMs. Um, you know, SARMs, I think, are for, again, I don't, I'm not, this is a couple of years ago I remember these studies. Mm -hmm. Do you know their legal status today? Um, mm. uh, I mean, the, the idea is, you know, someone doesn't want to go to the doctor or, you know, someone who's too young to qualify is going to go buy SARMs at a, at a major store whose name I won't mention for you know, reasons that will get us in trouble or whatever, but, um, you know, to, to just sidestep that. So if, if he's already gone to this process of being evaluated properly and is on a replacement dose, bother? Yeah. bottom line is, yeah, why bother? There you go. All right. Perfect. Thanks, Doc. <laughs> okay, Doc, next question. Um, is it beneficial to take liver detoxifier while on orals, anabolic orals, I'm assuming, or should I wait until I'm done with the orals? Will the, will the detoxifiers lower the effectiveness of the oils? And as a second part of the question, he says, also GH can cause insulin sensitivity and suppress the thyroid. So is it, uh, isn't it a good idea to supplement both insulin and T3 while on a GH cycle or prolonged GH cycle? Okay, first part of the question. Uh, when they talk about toxification of the liver, I'm a little lost because in um, not so much gym talk, but uh, vitamin sales talk, you hear or or you know alternative medicine, which is not true alternative medicine; it's really fringe stuff. Uh, they use the term toxic. You know, arsenic is definitely toxic. It's in high dose, certainly a poison. 
I say in high dose because actually, you know, a, a really, 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 really small dose, you know, is supposed to be part of, you know, our normal makeup because we get it, you know, from certain sources. But um, what is not good for the liver, particularly with the use of anabolic steroids, is extra fat. You know, a non-alcoholic, well, an alcoholic or non-alcoholic, fatty liver is, is a problem. Uh, what happens is uh, guys who use hormone replacement therapy because we're you know hitting a high normal amount tend to be more likely to get fatty liver. Certainly guys that use a, an above high normal level of either testosterone or a steroid tend to develop fatty liver. Why? Well, we're trying to we're trying to push muscle, uh, we're trying to push the sugars into muscle. We're trying to create muscle glycogen, right? So you do that, what happens after the muscle's stuffed, if you will, saturated? Next step up in the chain of storage is your liver. And the, the old bodybuilders uh, would, would take choline and inositol in high dose, high dose being about 3,000 milligrams a day. And I think we've talked about this before, right? Uh, to to rid the body of fatty liver, it's it's better than any pharmaceutical drug manufactured today for fatty liver. And if you talk to a good pharmacologist, you'll see them roll their eyes up, scratch their head, and say, "Yeah, actually, choline and inositol is better." It's OTC. It's over the counter. It's over the counter. It's it's they're both considered B vitamins. They're cheap as dirt. Um, again, I don't certainly not getting a free toaster from Twin Lab, but I just know that there are a company out there that makes. The highest strength I've seen, which is a 500-500 cap of choline and inositol, uh, the only drawback to any of these products typically is the choline is in bitartrate form, which means that it tends to loosen the stool. So some people complain, hey man, now you gave me diarrhea, uh, in which case you just take a little calcium to stop yourself up or compensate for it, okay? And you do that for 30 days, 3,000 milligrams of choline and inositol. Of each? Yeah. Okay. And you will squeeze that fatty liver clean wow. and it won't be toxic anymore how much calcium if you have a soft restore? well you can experiment with it i mean it doesn't happen to everybody um but i just throw that out there because I, I i've seen people come or heard them complain about it okay. and nowadays um and i'm talking about this is you know a lot of uh my patients that are say 75 years old you know old bodybuilders will show me you know on their list on the intake form of the supplements they're taking it'll include choline and acetal and say well hey why are you taking that and they'll say, and I don't want to name names, but, you know, so-and-so, a famous bodybuilder, uh, told me to take that, you know, a long time ago. I don't even remember. I just take it because I know it's good for me. And we'll have the discussion, you know, because I learned about it actually through, I have to give credit where credit is due, from Franco Colombo. Wow. He told me a long time ago that's what those guys were using. Of course, I followed up with the research, uh, not because I didn't trust Franco, but because I just wanted to, you know, learn more <laughs> about it. Man. And... Uh, uh, what they used to do is when they, you know, when any of these bodybuilders that were using steroids would go on a cycle, they would use a 30-day dose of this high-dose uh, choline and acetal, and you know, to clean out the liver, just prophylactically, if you will. Now, today, what is recommended is to add uh, one other ingredient, L-methionine, which is an amino acid, which is liver protective. It's a methyl donor, uh, but in about half the dose, 1,500 milligrams and combine it all into one capsule that's loosely called uh, a, a MIC cap, methionine and acetylcholine. Mm -hmm. um, and that you you know can use to not only clean out the liver, but you can use it protectively also. Wow. One of the side effects is you'll notice, uh, particularly, you know, I don't mean to be uh, necessarily gender specific, but you know most guys aren't con uh, concerned with softer skin. Mm -hmm. But ladies are, you know, they, they notice the, 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 the smooth texture of the skin uh, or oh. the improvement in that. Wow. And uh, they'll be on it and try the test, you know. Yeah, but but uh, at which point would you do it? Does it even matter or do you have to do it after the cycle, during or when? Well, that's a good point. So I'm getting to next. So a lot of the, the uh, well, the standard has always been, you know, after the cycle of steroids, use the choline and acetal for 30 days. But what about people who are on TRT? That's right. That's not a, you know, you're supposed to be on this right. replacement dose. That's right. So what I recommend, uh, and it all depends on, as in everything, what your diagnosis is and what your goal is, but, um, you know, every three months, just make sure the liver's clean. Obviously, doing a lot of cardio 
can help with that. It also depends upon your genetic tendencies. Some people have a tendency toward this non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. It depends on your diet. I mean, there's so many factors. Yeah. So we can look at your, oftentimes when you have fatty liver, your liver enzymes are mildly elevated, like you might see an AST and an ALT of you know, 60, 70, 70, 80, something like that, as opposed to, you know, in the hundreds or something. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's when you're a suspect. Of course, you can always ultrasound the liver to see if it looks fatty or not. Uh, why bother? It's a fairly cheap supplement. And just go, hey, every every quarter, make sure my liver's clean. Cool. Keep my cardio levels up. Don't eat too many sweets and, and uh, or too much beer <laughs> and alcohol. And, you know, you should have a nice, healthy liver. Uh, but that's better for you than, uh, well... I don't want to get into a a, uh, a certain type of match of comparing one yeah. or the other, but you know, milk thistle is is known to be liver protective. Mm -hmm. For what most of us are doing, you know, athletes and what we're talking about, this is way better for you than 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 milk thistle. Nice. So I would spend the money on on those supplements before I would milk thistle. Not that milk thistle is bad for you, yeah. just for an athlete's purpose. And I was going to say a maintenance dose. You know, I started talking about how girls knows how their skin just looks better and feels mm -hmm. better. So cut that back down to, say, 1,500 milligrams of choline and inositol on a daily basis for forever. Like I say, it's a cheap and easy supplement to obtain. So you could, that would be okay? Yeah. Okay. That's a good question. Very nice, very nice. All right. Thanks, Doc. Okay, okay. Um, hey, my name is Anthony, and I love the Ask the Doc series that you produce on YouTube. And muscle insider. I had a question and would love if the, you would be able to ask the doc for me on the next video. Thank you. So here's the question. Would testosterone and Anabar have any side, uh, a negative side effect on a person with Crohn's disease? I was operating in uh, 2008 where a piece of my ileum was removed. Since the operation, I've been symptom-free and pain-free with very minor inflammation, which the GI doctor says nothing to worry about. Recently tore my pectoral tendon and wanted to get uh, to its size and strength back. Thank you very much, Anthony. So for Crohn's, um, is I don't know. I guess is is, is testosterone and anabar going to negatively affect Crohn's? No, it shouldn't. Um, maybe the anabar might upset the GI tract because it's an oral steroid, and therefore has to be absorbed through the GI. And some people complain about stomach upset when they take anabar. So that's just something to look out for, uh, but not necessarily something that's probable. Uh, for Crohn's though, some perhaps unsolicited advice, uh, L-glutamine. Take your L-glutamine, five grams, three times a day, preferably on an empty stomach. If, if he's a bodybuilder, obviously empty stomach is hard to, to, <laughs> to get to, but you know, first thing in the morning, mm -hmm. uh, and hopefully last thing before bed. And then do your best somewhere in between because L-glutamine has been proven time and time again. There's so many articles proving that it will help heal epithelial tissue. So this one's a no-brainer. you got to take your L-glutamine if you have Crohn's. Uh, also, he mentioned pain, uh, usually because the, the muscles will spasm uh, around the, the lesions. Um, enterically coated, very important, so that it goes through the stomach and into the small intestine before it breaks apart. Enterically coated peppermint oil is very useful for reducing the pain. It relaxes the smooth muscle, muscle really, really well. Again, the all natural is usually appealing to most, um, but it's over the counter and fairly cheap. Um, and uh, of course, you know, you, you're not gonna help yourself repair much of anything if you can't get food through your GI tract, so you want to keep it as healthy as you can. Mm -hmm. Now relating it to his part about you know trying to heal up his pectoral muscle, um, L-glutamine can help, as I said, heal epithelial tissue. Um, it can only be helpful, and it's not expensive. And that you know, I'm trying to think if there was another question there about you know his using this stuff with Crohn's. Um, I mean, if you're symptom free for the most part since 2008 with just a resection of the of the intestine, you know, the ileum in this case, mm -hmm. that's pretty fantastic. Wow. And uh, also, I'll, I'll quickly add that there are a lot of a lot of studies um, surrounding a lot of research, I guess I should say, surrounding Crohn's. So keep uh, keep your eye on the on the peer reviewed research that's that's being uh, performed right now because we're making improvements with Crohn's. Um, uh, the GI center over at Cedars here in Los Angeles, 
Uh, Mark Pimentel is the head doctor, uh, head of GI uh, studies over there. He's doing a lot of work with IBS and IBD. You know, Crohn's is considered uh, IBD. So, um, you know, be on the lookout for improvements in, in, in diagnosis and treatment with Crohn's. Nice. Thank you so much, Doc.